Hey guys, and welcome to the first video of the Creating a Game tutorial series using the Arcade Space Shooter template. Uh, this is a series that will take you through all of the basic steps uh, from scratch on how to create your very first game using the template. Um, you can see here that the goal is to teach you all of the different steps into creating a very simple game from start to finish. So we will start by opening the project as you would download it when you get it from either Ichio or the Marketplace, and we're gonna create a brand new level and start from scratch. Uh, now, keep in mind that the goal isn't to make a really great level aesthetically. We're gonna focus on functionality, and we're going to make sure that we hit all of the major blueprints and functionality, just so you understand how all of the different systems work together. Um, so for this video, uh, let's just take a quick introduction at exactly what you're getting when you download uh, the template. So let me just go ahead and jump to Unreal. And when you first open the project, this is what you should see, right? Uh, you should load to the Corneria level. You can see here, uh, obviously this has a lot of the different things. This is what you've seen in the video. So we're not gonna take a look at this level today. Uh, we'll do that in a separate video, but let's just take a quick look at uh, where things are located um, in the folder structure. So if I go here to the bottom, I'm just going to stretch this up here. Everything is contained within the AAST uh, folder. Uh, you have blueprints, which contain all of the functionality. Data tables, which we're going to take a look there. Only has one data table that uh, helps you with the level linking. Enums, uh, more likely you don't really have to deal with that. These are all of the enums used throughout the blueprints to create those drop down lists that you see for your options. Um, later on in more advanced videos, uh, I'll teach you how to actually modify the enums and add additional options to your blueprints. But for now, you can just leave this as is. The maps folder, where you, you have all the demo levels and we're going to be creating all the new levels. Obviously, materials, meshes, uh, particles. I'm including some demo particles for explosions and things like that. Obviously, all of the meshes that you see here that are uh, for demonstration purposes are in the meshes folder. Uh, the sound folder is empty. Um, unfortunately, the sound effects that, that, that I've used before are borrowed from uh, Star Fox, which I cannot distribute. Uh, but we will be looking at how to add your own sound effects later on as well. Uh, that way the template isn't so silent. Uh, and I may consider even including some sample uh, effects that I make later on, just so everything's set up. Obviously, the textures, and there's a, a blueprint tutorial introduction here. Uh, whoops that if you just click here, um, it'll go through very basic steps on you know what you just got. Uh, we won't be looking at this today, but you know if you want, just go ahead and click on the on the different um, screens here, and it'll guide you through some uh, some basic information. So if we look at the blueprints, we have all of the different uh, major blueprints like the game modes, uh, the main menu mode, which is a separate uh, mode, so you can have your mouse, main menu controller. You have your game mode, your game instance, and your game HUD. All of these different classes are here at the root of the directory for blueprints. And then you have three different folders. Actors refer to all of the blueprints that are basically non-characters. Anything that is interactive, that is part of the environment, but it's not really a character. Um, and you can see here, if I just click here, uh, you'll see things like bounds, these are, um, you know, if you want to constrain the player when he's fighting in a certain area, uh, you use this specific bounds. There's the fixed camera actor that you need to get the, you know, some of the properties of, of the fixed camera, which means, you're, you know, every time you roll, it doesn't inherit the roll, for example. The components here are actor components that you can add to basically any object in your scene, and um, it adds specific functionality. For example, this one will make the, the, the actor hover, or looks like it's gonna hover. Uh, this one will rotate the actor based on settings. This one will add it to the radar, uh, as, and you can select which type of um, radar icon you use, for example. Um, on the crash folder, you have the camera shake. Nothing really uh, to do here. This is just the, the native camera shake class in Unreal, and this is used every time the player is hit. Under game modes, you have two additional game modes, the survival mode manager, and you can use the, this blueprint to set up uh, specific settings for the survival mode, as for example, um, keeping track of enemies, how many enemies are left, etc. 
And then for the time attack mode manager, uh, you can specify things like how much time does the player have, how many objects, etc. Interfaces, and right now we're just using one interface. This is the interface used between all of the enemies and the player. And every time an enemy is destroyed, it'll actually use the interface and send this information to the player so the player can then record the kill and the points uh, and display it in the HUD. We have obstacles, various different obstacles here. We have um, a destructible obstacle that you can use. You can put pretty much any destructible mesh and it gives you a bunch of settings. Um, you have a um, moving laser, which is um, the obstacle you saw. If you looked at the video, when you're going through the secret boss uh, corridor, there are several lasers moving around. So this is that. Uh, you have a rotating door and you can um, specify how many hits it takes. And then eventually after you shoot it several times, it opens. You have a simple obstacle blueprint, which we'll be using very soon in this tutorial series. And it basically gives you a bunch of options for any mesh as far as the materials, uh, rotation, and movement. And then you have the sliding door, which again, you saw, uh, it has the option of, of opening up on proximity. And this is again, the door that you see when you're going through the corridors towards the secret boss. You have the pickups, and I'm pretty sure this is self-explanatory, but you have your bombs, you have your checkpoint, which you just drop it in into the level and it automatically saves your location, health, laser pickup which is the double laser this is just a base class that has a bunch of um, functionality so in case you wanted to add your own pickup you will create a child of this class you have the points cache which is again a little blueprint that moves around and after the player um, shoots it several times it explodes and gives the player points you just have the the regular points pickup and then your shield under save game you just have one blueprint which is the bp save game blueprint this is the blueprint that will actually be used to save all of your stats to disk, right? And we will be going through this later on um, in an another video on how to add more variables and more things um, that you like to save in your game. Skybox, I just have a very simple Skybox uh, blueprint here. This is different from the Epix uh, standard Skybox and this is what I'm using on the survival and the time attack modes and you'll see it later on when we use it. This is going to add a, um, a specific image skybox, like the, like the space skybox that I'm using. Sound, there is one blueprint called BP Set Sound, and this basically changes the background music when you go through it. So you can use this, for example, to when you're approaching a specific part of the level and you want to change the background music, you'll put this, the player will overlap, and then the music that's currently playing will fade out and the new music will fade in. You can use it like I use it here um, to change the music when you're about to fight a boss, right? So you may have the regular background music and then as you're approaching the boss, then the music changes to something else. Under tools, you have a bunch of different tools. Some of them I've showcased on the launch uh, trailer like the corridor builder. Um, this is gonna be in a separate video again, but this helps you create your interiors very, very quickly. You have a debug set track location. We'll use that later as well. This is a blueprint that you can use to debug your, um, your tracks, right? So let's say you have a really long level and every time you hit play, you start at the beginning of the track and you have to go through all of the track, all of the level, but there's a specific part of the level that you want to test. This is what you would use to teleport anywhere on the, uh, on the track by using a specific value here. Difficulty manager, this will help you change the difficulty of your game on the fly. You have to drop this blueprint in your level and then through the, through the pause menu, you can actually change the difficulty um, during runtime. Enemy spawner, this is the, what you're seeing here a lot. This is a very, very uh, robust blueprint. It basically uh, allows you to spawn any enemy inside the level with a bunch of options. Um, so why would you use this instead of the regular um, enemy blueprint? Well, you can randomize things, right? So you can, you can have a random enemy spawn to add variety. You can have a random uh, weapon spawn, whether it's a laser or a uh, fireball and a bunch of other different behaviors. So 
I would recommend normally, unless you have something very specific, just to use this because it adds variety. So every time the player plays her level, it'll be a little bit different, right? And you have a lot of control. You have the procedural debris, which I've, I'm using on the survival uh, mode. This creates a uh, asteroid field, basically, and we will go over this blueprint in a separate video in more detail. Uh, you have the option of uh, selecting, obviously, the size, how many instances, uh, and then whether they're destructible or not. Uh, and then it has other settings, like you can rotate the field, you can use a, a volume to create like a tunnel uh, through the field to kind of lure the player in a specific path. You have the road builder, which is what I'm using here in Cornera to build my little roads. Very simple tool, but speeds up uh, development of roads and, and uh, bridges. You have the spawn manager. This is, uh, think about it as a class that manages spawners, enemy spawners. So on the launch trailer, you saw how I created a uh, wave of enemies. So what you can do is you can put several different enemy spawners with the specific settings, and then you would use a spawn manager to activate all of your enemy spawners based on a specific criteria. It could be um, proximity, it could be anything else. There's a bunch of different options there. And then you have the clear stage, which is the blueprint that you would use to basically end the stage. Once the player overlaps this blueprint, the, the stage will end, the, the, the stage sequence um, will, will kick off and then you'll see the little cinematic and then it'll use your level linking table to basically load the next level. It'll save the game, it'll load the next level. We're gonna be going through all this uh, through the tutorial series, so don't worry if, if this is kind of unclear. There's a lot of information here, but I just wanted to kind of give you a tour before we actually get into creating anything. For the tracks, you have the assigned track, which is uh, a blueprint that actually attaches the player to a specific track. So you can have multiple tracks in your level. As a matter of fact, here you'll see that we have two tracks, the main one here, and then the alternate track, which you can use to go to the to the secret boss. And how do you uh, attach the player from one track to the other? You use the assigned track blueprint here. You have a blueprint here called change track speed. So you can change the actual speed of the player while he's in a specific track to pretty much anything you want. And this is used, for example, here in the Corneria level to slow down the player once he hits the Corneria part of the city. So if you do play the level, if you click play here and go through the fog player, you'll notice that you're going at a certain speed here through the through the ocean. And once you, you enter Corneria, the ship actually slows down. And that is done by using this change track speed uh, blueprint. You can use it again for obviously any other use case, say that you want um, an, a part of your track to be, uh, you know, the player is going really fast, escaping an explosion, for example, then you can speed up the, the track speed and then you can have a bunch of obstacles. Um, you can create a bunch of different scenarios there. Infinite track trigger. This basically converts any blueprint track into an infinite track. And this is used for a secret boss. So obviously, uh, if you want to have a scenario where the player is infinitely going on a track, then you would use this. And again, this is a bit confusing. We will go over the setup of this uh, later on. BP track this is the main track blueprint that you see here. And we're gonna we're gonna uh, look at this in the next video how to lay up a, a, a simple track. And then you have a BP track trigger counter, and this is used in conjunction with the assigned track blueprint. Uh, because there are several modes of assigning a player to a track. You can just have it assign it as soon as you overlap, or you can use triggers, which is what I'm using in Corneria, um, to activate this blueprint and then put the player on a different track. Or you can use um, tags. So you can have, um, you know, the player has to kill a certain amount of enemies, and then that will activate this trigger here. For UMG, we have several different blueprints here that will display messages to the player. You can see one here that says phase one. Uh, these are the blueprints that are used to display uh, the NPC messages or the phases. When, when you start the level, it says phase one, get to Corneria. That's one of the ones here, uh, BP show widget phase. When you go into Corneria, it says, hey, this is horrible. Gives you like a little message. Uh, you know, this is the, you know, the... I think it's the, the VP show message that we're using. So there's different different ways of displaying messages on the screen. Then you have the different options. This is the, the player weapons, like the laser, the homing shot, 
Uh, they have a fireball and you have the bomb that you pick up and you have um, alternatively for the enemies they have a fireball a laser and they have mines then for the characters you have the player this is where you would find your player vp and you would you would use this to customize a bunch of different abilities and tweak a bunch of parameters you have your enemies here under characters slash enemies you have your bosses boss one and two you have your flying enemies and you can see here we have the AI, which we'll go over later. Destructible actors, which means um, if you decide to have your enemies actually be destroyed, uh, not just explode, then you would use these actors here. And then you, you have the enemy base class here, the flying enemy base class. And then you have the different children, which are the specific um, instances or different types of enemies. If you go to ground enemies, you have an enemy ground base class and your basic turret. And then, of course, the third category is a little confusing. is again called the UMG, but these are the actual uh, blueprint widgets that are going on the screen. Uh, so UMG inside actors are blueprints that display the widgets. These, uh, these ones that are here under UMG are the actual widgets that are displayed. So you can see here WBP HUD. This is, this is I'm just going to open it. This is the actual HUD that is displayed to the player, right? WBP game over, when when the game is over, this is the, 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 the screen that is shown. So these are the actual screens. And obviously they have, um, they have certain logic as well. So uh, that is the distinction. If you go to data tables, there's only one data table and this is DT levels. This uh, is basically your level linking system and you will be adding and, and, and removing levels from here. Uh, your player blueprint will use this table to understand what uh, level music it should use when it loads, what uh, screenshot to use when you save or load your game, uh, what the, the display name is of the level, right? You can have a file name and display name is different, and you can have what is the next level. So basically, you're using this to create your level sequence very, very quickly, uh, and you don't have to hard code anything. Everything is done through this table. Like I mentioned, the enums, these are just enums based on the specific blueprints. We don't have to really look at this. Uh, then you have your maps, level corner, which is obviously this one. Level main menu, that's your main menu. And that is the first level. When you package the project, that is set as the first level for the project, right? Uh, you have your level overview, which you can look at all the meshes, survival, uh, um, time attack. And then there's a little test level. and, and you may or may not have this, but this is just a throwaway level. We're going to we're going to start fresh and create a brand new level later. OK, I'm not going to go through the rest. These are just materials, meshes, particles, etc. Uh, for the most part, this is just um, the rest of the stuff to make things look the way they look. Uh, the important thing is obviously the blueprints. And on the next video, we will actually start creating our level. So um, I have a um, a general idea of how I want to proceed. I don't have uh, any specific ways of, of, you know, what the level will look like. So we will we will do this on the fly, and I think that's the point. I want to show you in real time how you would go about creating the level and how long or how little it actually takes. So hopefully you're going to find this series useful. I'm going to continue to add more and more, and even after we create our basic level. Uh, we may do a, an advanced series when we take a look at specific blueprints and we go in depth. Uh, things like the AI, for example, we may want to uh, spend more time on that. So hopefully you enjoy the series. Uh, please uh, let me know if this is useful or if you'd like to see something else in a future video. Uh, you can message me. Um, you have my email or you can message me on Itch.io if you bought it on Itch.io or please leave a comment on the video below. Thank you so much and up to the next video.